talk about Pharaoh, or Pharaoh Yugi, or other Yugi, or spirit, or at him. Some of them call him my king. I could just call him Pharaoh, like, just Pharaoh. Oh, and uh, the, the intro's done. Okay, hey everybody, so we're going to talk about our next character from Yu-Gi-Oh! today. So, our next character is Atim, and, uh, that's Atim. Okay, there he is. And the way that I can always tell if it's Atim or Yu-Gi is the drawing, it, oh, the only way you can tell is actually based on their eyes. Yu-Gi's eyes are always drawn more round. Atim's are more like a box when they're drawn. Let's, let me see if I can find something I can show you this. So here you go, there's, this is Yugi. You can see, he seems pretty nice. But that would be Atim, or other Yugi. At the beginning, it's really hard. So real fast, Smash is the history of his name. This is going to be chock full of spoilers. So really fast, the history of his name. First of all, they started calling him just Spirit, because they knew he was the spirit of the Millennium Puzzle. That was it. And then eventually, some of the times they would call him, like, the other Yugi, and... Yeah, you get the idea, but then eventually they found out that he was actually an ancient Egyptian pharaoh spirit. So they started calling him Pharaoh because, well, he didn't know his name. So people would call him Pharaoh, but then some other people who, like, respected him more, I guess, would call him my king. And eventually we get into the Millennium series, and now we find out his name is Atim. Uh, when it's spelled in hieroglyphics, there's a bird at the end of his name, and a bird, that bird translates to an A, so his name is A-T-I-M-A, -A, so I feel it should be pronounced Atima, but he said Atim, so his name, so then we find out his name is Atim, so we're just going to call him Atim. And for the longest time I just called him Pharaoh Yugi, because I, uh, I don't know why I called him Pharaoh Yugi, combining the two, yay! So. Atim. Atim's probably the most complex character, I think, out of this whole thing. Mainly because it's like he's an ancient Egyptian pharaoh. He is going to have a lot of complexity to him to begin with. So Atim is probably my favorite character out of this entire thing. And, like, he's really confident, and that's a good thing. But the thing that makes him so interesting is that we don't know a lot about his past. With everyone else, we kind of know pretty quickly what their interests are, what their, what their personalities are like, and, like, pretty kind of what they want to do with their lives. And... It's really interesting. Like, obviously, I told you last week, Yugi is a really nice, sweet kid, and it's great watching him become more confident, but watching Atim, who is extremely confident, kind of, re like, take a step back, and then realize that he needs to start making some friends, and that he should be a nicer person, it's interesting. And this, it really hit me just recently because I watched an episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! and they were talking about how he was such a bad pharaoh and I was like, he seems like a pretty nice guy and then I realized it was later in the series and this is when I started to read the mangas again. Oh, this guy has issues because half the games he plays at the beginning of the series are kind of deadly and end up killing or very much harming someone or leaving them mentally unstable because he creates like what's called a shadow game and we're used to hearing that in the later series when they start you know playing these more card games but he creates this shadow game and in the shadow game he causes a penalty game to happen in which the person kind of just goes insane or you see, most of the time when he doesn't create a shadow game <laughs> things don't turn out very well and usually people end up dying or getting caught on fire or nearly exploding or getting electrocuted like it was very very weird like some of the things I was like oh okay now I see how you were evil pharaoh and even when you go back like when they go back in time kind of like they go into his memory and stuff like that even when that happens it's incredibly interesting to watch this character go from like this really confident person but then now take a step back and he then become really actually very nice and you see a lot of it throughout the entire thing and as he especially as he keeps going I mentioned that Yugi managed to overpower him towards the beginning to stop him from Kaiba virtually he was going to just to win a game he was going to kill Kaiba because 
like something about like the shock or of losing or something weird like that and the holograms and that they have and why haven't we invented this dual disc yet because that sounds really awesome and if you want to make a card game popular you could get it make a dual disc for it no wonder why dual monsters as they call it is so popular because those dual discs are awesome but anyway back to the main point and that's that Yugi was, had to overpower him to stop him and always has to talk some sense into him and I mentioned last week that there were a few times that he lost and that was because he was a dum dum to put it simply and one of those times was actually because he he proved a point that he was evil but it also showed you that yes he was evil especially if you were at the beginning of this series because he used the seal of Ar 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 Arhanos or the this seal, and you're just sitting there like, no, 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 because you know it's a bad thing, and you know it turns the person evil, and it does turn him evil, but afterwards, he's kind of, he's, like, wakes up and is like, I am a bad person. Well, you know, we're all just like, you did screw up, but that doesn't make you a bad person, even though he keeps thinking that he is a bad person, because it kind of cost you he, his soul. Yeah, spoilers! So, anyway, when he goes back in time, you see, back in time, or into his memories, or whatever they want to call it, you see a lot of his past. He, they do that multiple times, and it's constantly trying to figure out this guy's past. And that is why he is probably, he's just the most interesting character. This whole series is about helping him be able to defeat the great evil, which is like the darkness, and then have to, and then be able to go and be at peace with death, which probably means going to Anubis to get his heart weight or something weird like that, because, you know, he's still Egyptian, he'd probably be going there, and, yeah, there was a movie with Yu-Gi-Oh, and I'm not even going to start on that movie, but it really, that's why he's the most interesting character, just the way that we have to, like, figure out his path, and you see the most change in him, because I was, I saw, like, the entire ending, and I was like, that was so good. I'm going to read the mangas now. That's what got me wanting to read the mangas. After I re watched the last episode, and I started reading these, and I was going, at him. What? What happened? Just flipping through, going, uh, uh, at, at him? I thought you were nice. And so, when you find out his name, it's really cool, because then he defeats the darkness, and he still plays like really hard and like you know it's awesome seeing Yui and him go back and forth in their final duel and everything but th his transformation I love his transformation so much and obviously he's still an anime character or manga character you're going to have some pretty generic parts to this I like that he's not as generic as he could be he's not defined by one trait because he has to learn the other half, which is Yugi's half, and he slowly like became his own person again, which is strange because it's like your spirit, but you know it makes a zero, it makes a little sense because then it's like his, the Millennium Puzzle was his mind, and the Millennium items I gotta say those are interesting, but we'll save those for another time. So that is acting for you. I really like how he entirely just changed and transformed. Especially when you go back and you start from the very beginning. When you read the final one and then you go back to the very beginning, you're staring at it going, that, that, that was a lot of change you did. Because this series was, took place over a couple of years. And that was a lot of things that had to go on and a lot of change that happened. And it honestly is awesome and amazing. And... Again, he's just, he's like my favorite character out of this whole thing. You know me, I like the mysterious characters. I, I'm Nico, Anubis, Walt, all of them. And he is that mysterious character. And, you know, he still recognizes the joke. You don't see him making too many laughs. But it just, like, it makes you smile when he kind of, when he just, when you see that frame of him, like, looking at whatever's going on and just having that little smile on his face. You're just like, he's growing on you, isn't he? Because... At first, it's like they, him and Yugi are night and day, and then they slowly kind of meet in the middle, and that's what had to happen, because that was the goal for both of them. That's what they had to teach each other, and they ended up in the middle, and I really like that. It wasn't just about, you know, oh, we gotta get the Pharaoh back to the land of the dead, or something weird like that. It was 
deeper than that. So that is at him for you. And next time we are going to think, I think we're going to give a little talk to the Millennium items because those things are really interesting. So next time we'll be talking about the Millennium items and stay with the Egyptian theme after we talked about our Egyptian pharaoh. Again, just picture this, but with a pharaoh instead of a god. That That's how you get through this whole thing. So, thanks for watching. Hope hope you enjoyed this. Still can't hold these the right way. It's a manga. I always got to remember that. So, thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. And I will see you guys next time when we talk about the Millennium Items and their keepers. Because there are keepers of the Millennium Items as well. So, thanks for watching. Watch out for that next character review. And watch out for the next world review. So thanks for watching. Bye!